we have learnt about Norris type 1 reactions, Norris type 2 reactions and beta cleavage reactions. Today let us see the differences between Norris type 1 reactions, Norris type 2 reactions and beta cleavage reactions. All these reactions occur in carbonyl compounds in presence of UV light. Let us see when do these reactions occur. Which reactions dominate? What are the intermediate intermediates formed in these reactions? And also see which carbonyl compounds undergo Norris type 1 reactions, which compounds undergo Norris type 2 reactions and which compounds undergo beta cleavage reactions. First let us see beta cleavage reactions. These reactions occur in carbonyl compounds containing cyclopropane ring or epoxide ring. This is acetyl cyclopropane. This is the cyclopropane ring. This is the carbonyl compound. This is cyclopropane ring containing carbonyl compound. This is an epoxide. This is epoxide containing carbonyl compound. And this is a bicyclo carbonyl compound which has a cyclopropane ring. These kind of carbonyl compounds which contain cyclopropane ring or epoxide ring undergo beta cleavage reactions. In these carbonyl compounds the beta bond that is the bond between alpha carbon and beta carbon is very weak. So it cleaves very easily than the alpha bond which is present in these compounds. Let us see the mechanism. In the primary process the bottom the beta bond cleaves upon irradiation by UV light forming 1 3 bi radical intermediate. This is the cyclopropane carbonyl compound that is acetyl cyclopropane. This is CH2 CH2 CH C double bond O CH3. This is the carbonyl group. Adjacent to it is the alpha carbon and this is beta carbon and this is another beta carbon. So the bond between alpha carbon and beta carbon will cleave forming two radicals. One radical on this CH2 and another radical on CH2. So as a result of which we get a radical on this carbon and a radical on this carbon. This is first carbon, this is second carbon and this is third carbon. So this is 1, 3 bi radical intermediate. This is the primary process. In the secondary process, the 1, 3 bi radical undergoes 1, 2 hydrogen shift or 1, 2 alkyl shift to give major and minor products. So this is the 1, 3 bi radical intermediate. There is a hydrogen on this carbon. Another hydrogen on this carbon. Either this hydrogen or this hydrogen can migrate to this or this carbon compound. This makes it 1, 2 hydrogen shift. So this, if this hydrogen migrates to this CH2 radical, this is A root, if this hydrogen shifts to this CH radical, 
this is b root so let us see both in the a root the hydrogen here has shifted to this radical and this radical and this radical will form a bond so as a result of which we get CH3 here and the radical on this carbon will shift to this carbon this new radical and this radical already present on this carbon will form a bond so we get CH3 single bond CH double bond CH C double bond work and CH3 this is major product because there are alternating single and double bonds there is a single bond then followed by double bond and followed by single bond and a double bond so this is um, there is sorry this there is a single bond followed by a double bond and a single bond and a double bond so this is a major product because due to this alternating double bond and single bonds this can this structure can resonate so it is a more stable so this is a major product now let us see what happens when this hydrogen shifts to this CH radical. So this hydrogen has shifted to this radical and forms a bond here. So the radical will shift to this carbon atom. This radical and this radical together will form a bond. So as a result of which we get CH2 double bond CH single bond CH single bond C double bond O CH single bond CH3 this is a minor product because this product cannot resonate so it is less stable so this is a minor product these are the beta cleavage reactions in these type of compounds, Norris type 1 reactions generally do not occur, though alpha bond is present because the beta bond is weaker, hence it cleaves before the alpha bond could cleave. In these type of carbonyl compounds, there is no gamma hydrogen atom, so no gamma hydrogen atom abstraction can take place and there is no formation of 1,4 bi radical intermediate. So though the beta bond cleaves, typical Norris type 2 reactions do not occur in these compounds. Let us see Norris type 2 reactions. These reactions occur in carbonyl compounds having at least one gamma hydrogen atom and a beta bond that is bond between alpha carbon and beta carbon. Let us see the mechanism. In the primary process upon irradiation by UV light the bond between gamma hydrogen and gamma carbon starts breaking. At the same time, a new bond starts forming between oxygen of carbonyl group and gamma hydrogen, forming a six membered transition ring or state. Let us see this transition state. So, this is the carbonyl compound. R C double bond O CH2 CH2 CH 
to R. This is alpha carbon, this is beta carbon and this is gamma carbon. This is gamma hydrogen. The bond between gamma carbon, gamma hydrogen starts cleaving. And a new bond between oxygen atom of the carbonyl group and the hydrogen atom starts forming. As a result of which, we get six-membered transition state or ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, this is six-membered transition state. Then, <coughs> the gamma hydrogen atom is abstracted by the oxygen of the carbonyl group to form a 1,4 bi radical intermediate. This is the six member transition state. When this hydrogen atom is abstracted by this oxygen atom, we get one four bi radical. As this hydrogen atom is cleaved from this gamma carbon atom, a radical is formed on this gamma carbon and a radical is formed on this carbon. So as a result of which we get 1, 4 by radical. This is first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon. So this is 1, 4 by radical intermediate is formed. <coughs> this is the primary process. In the secondary process, the 1,4 bi radical intermediate undergoes homolytic cleavage of the beta bond, that is, the bond between alpha carbon and beta carbon, to form products. The products are an alkene and an enol of ketone. Let us see that. <coughs> this is the beta bond. This is alpha carbon, this is beta carbon. So the bond between alpha carbon and beta carbon cleaves <coughs> forming <coughs> two radicals. One radical on the alpha carbon, another radical on the beta carbon. As a result of which, we get a new radical on alpha carbon and a new radical on beta carbon. This radical and this radical will form a new bond. As a result of which, we get R, C, O, H, double bond CH2. This is enol. Here we get CH2, double bond, CH, R. This is an alkene. This enol will undergo tautomerization to form ketone. R C double bond O CH3. This is ketone. This is alkene CH2 double bond CH R. So these are the products formed in Norrish type 2 reactions. So we have learnt carbonyl compounds having at least one gamma hydrogen atom and a beta bond undergo Norrish type 2 reactions. Though these compounds have alpha carbon as well, Norrish type 2 reactions occur readily as beta bond is weaker, so it cleaves easily. <coughs> alpha bond cleaves less readily, giving a minor proportion of Norrish type 1 reactions. So, a carbonyl compound having at least one gamma hydrogen and a beta bond will also have alpha bond. It gives mostly Norrish type 2 reactions as beta bond cleaves easily and less of Norrish type 1 reactions as alpha bond cleaves less readily than beta bond. 
Now let us see Norris type 1 reactions. These reactions occur in carbonyl compounds having alpha bond. That is bond between carbonyl group and alpha carbon. Let us see the mechanism. Primary process. Upon irradiation by UV light, the carbonyl compound undergoes homolytic cleavage of alpha bond. That is bond between carbonyl carbon and alpha carbon to form an acyl intermediate free radical and an alkyl intermediate free radical. This is a carbonyl compound CH3, CH2, C double bond O, CH2, CH3. Upon irradiation by UV light, the alpha bond. This is the alpha carbon, this is the carbonyl group, this is an alpha bond. This is carbonyl group and this is alpha carbon. So, this is also an alpha bond. Any one of these bonds can cleave. Let us cleave this bond. So what happens? A radical is formed on this CH2 and a radical is formed on this C double bond O. As a result of which we get CH3 CH2 radical which is alkyl intermediate free radical and CH3 CH2 C double bond O radical. This is acyl intermediate free radical. This is the primary process. In the secondary process, these intermediate radicals are highly reactive and unstable. To become stable, they undergo various reactions to give different products under different conditions. Let us see one by one. The first one is decarbonylation of acyl intermediate free radical. Decarbonylation means removal of carbon monoxide. This reaction occurs at high temperature to give us alkyl free radical. CH3, CH2, C double bond O is acyl free radical. This acyl free radical, the bond between CH2 and carbonyl group will undergo homolytic cleavage to give us CH3, CH2 radical and carbon monoxide. This CH3, CH2 is alkyl free radical. These alkyl, two of these alkyl free radicals will combine together to give us an alkane. CH3, CH2 radical and CH3, CH2 radical. These two radicals will come together to form a new bond. This is a new bond. So as a result of which we get CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3 which is nothing but an alkane that is butane. Next, dimerization of two acyl intermediate free radicals will form a diketone. This occurs at a low temperature. CH3, CH2, C double bond O radical is an acyl free radical. Then this CH3, CH2, C double bond O radical, this is also acyl free radical. These two radicals will come together to form a new bond. As a result of which, we get CH3, CH2, C double bond O, C double bond O, CH2, CH3. This is nothing but diketone. This is hexadione. 
So, two SIL free radicals will combine to form diketone. Next, disproportionation between two SIL radicals to form an aldehyde and ketene. Disproportionation or intramolecular hydrogen abstraction between two SIL free radicals will give us an aldehyde and a ketene. CH3, CH2, C double bond O radical. This is a cell free radical. This is another cell free radical. This hydrogen and carbon bond will cleave. And this hydrogen radical will migrate to this C double bond O radical. Giving us CH3, CH2. C double bond O H that is aldehyde. Then this radical and newly formed this radical will form a new bond giving us ketene. Next hydrogen abstraction by SIL free radical from alkyl free radical occurs to form an aldehyde and an alkene. CH3, CH2, C double bond O radical, this is SL free radical. CH3, CH2 radical, this is alkyl free radical. The bond between this carbon and this hydrogen cleaves and this hydrogen is transferred to this SL free radical as a result of which we get ch3 ch2 ch o that is aldehyde and this newly formed radical and this radical will form a bond new bond as a result of which we get alkene ch2 double bond CH2 this is an alkene then hydrogen abstraction by alkyl free radical from SIL free radical to form an alkene and ketene this is CH3 CH2 radical that is alkyl free radical <coughs> CH3, CH2, C double bond O radical, SL free radical. The bond between this carbon atom and hydrogen atom cleaves and this hydrogen is transferred to this alkyl free radical. As a result of which we get CH3, CH3 in alkane and this radical and this newly formed radical will form a new bond. So, as a result of which we get ketene. So, these are the reactions of carbonyl compounds. So, we can see in beta cleavage reactions 1, 3 bi radical is formed. It undergoes 1 to hydrogen shift or 1 to alkyl shift to form products. In Norwich type 2 reactions, since beta bond is weaker than alpha bond, by gamma hydrogen if there is gamma hydrogen uh, present it will undergo Norwich type 2 reactions and if alpha bond is present Norwich type 2 reactions occur thanks for watching please Check my playlist.
to learn in detail about Norris type 1, Norris type 2 and beta cleavage reactions. Thank you.